Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is the Corsair Saber RGB Pro. This is a budget gaming mouse from Corsair that's interesting for a number of reasons, and not least of which is the fact that it's pitched as a Pro Champion Series device. So this is a device that goes alongside a number of other devices from Corsair that are pitched as being Pro Champion for professional gamers, which is an oddity because it goes hand in hand with being a budget mouse that comes in at around £50 sterling and about the same in dollars so it's pretty affordable and yet it's pitched to be a pro gaming mouse which is a bit of a conflict in my mind usually the pro end gaming mice will be more expensive yet this one packs in a number of features which make it potentially appealing for example it uses an 8000 hertz polling rate which is similar to that seen on the razer viper 8k which i looked at recently what this means essentially is that you get a lower clip latency at 0. 125 milliseconds that's comparable with the Razer Viper 8K and that is a more expensive mouse which is about 20 or 30 pounds or dollars more than the Corsair variant and so perhaps uh, pitched a little bit higher and yet this mouse offers that and a number of other features that include some quite nice RGB lighting that you saw at the beginning uh, 18,000 DPI, six programmable buttons, and some other highlights that make it really interesting. For example, it works with NVIDIA's Reflex Latency Analyzer. So they've just announced that recently, and that is a major highlight for this mouse as well. This has been officially added to the list of compatible devices by NVIDIA as working with the Reflex Latency Analyzer. And I've done a video separately on that if you want to check that out. But this is, mouse is essentially going in a list of other devices, which interestingly doesn't include the Razer Viper 8K. So if you want a mouse that has a high polling rate and also has that compatibility with NVIDIA's Reflex Latency Analyzer, this might well be it. And it's reasonably affordable too. It also has a number of other highlights and I'll leave all the specifications and everything else in the description so you can check that out as well as links to other videos and relevant information on those things but it has Omron switches and it has quick strike buttons which are a Corsair product which essentially means that the switches and the buttons themselves are very close together so there's a minimal amount of distance and travel so basically it reacts really quickly to your presses it also is designed to be semi lightweight it's not ultra lightweight it comes in at 74 grams which isn't like the lightest mouse that I've tried of late however it isn't heavy either and it also has some fairly nifty RGB lighting as you'll see as we go through this video. Now I have been using this mouse for a couple of weeks now so I'm able to give you my thoughts on it. My initial thoughts when I got it out of the box was it didn't look that great, it doesn't look very premium, it doesn't look particularly nice. However I was struck by a number of things about it especially when I found out more about it in terms of it working with the reflex latency analyzer and the fact that it has such a high polling rate. It also has this really flexible cable here that you can see which is basically kind of floppy a bit like a shoestring and that makes it so it doesn't snag on the desk and it moves around swiftly and so combine that with a lightweight design and a smooth underside and it gets around really nicely too. Now I also found that this mouse is verging on the larger side. According to the official measurements I have at hand that verges on being medium to large and I'll leave information on that in the description as well but I found that this mouse is a slightly larger mouse and that is more comfortable for me personally. It is also designed for palm or claw grips and it has this strange sort of ergonomic shape to it where it sort of sets off to the right hand side and slopes off to the right a bit um towards the pinky finger so i find that this sits really nicely in the hand is actually quite comfortable to use now other highlights to it is it has a dpi switching button on the top and an indicator to let you know which DPI level you're on on the side, as well as those side thumb buttons. I must admit I found the side thumb buttons to be a bit tricky to use, although they do jut out nicely. And it is comfortable, it does sit nicely in the hand as I said, so it's been ideal for working and for gaming purposes. And those quick strike buttons, they don't have much play in them, and they react nicely, so it's certainly been really good to use when playing Rainbow Six Siege and other sort of fast paced FPS shooters and so I haven't had any complaints from it in that department and overall it's a really nice mouse for the money for the amount of money you're paying you're getting a really good mouse here I have found however that it isn't quiet there have been some times where just 
resting my hand on the mouse and not actually using it or just you know if you're just moving it around but not necessarily pressing the buttons i found that it has a bit of sound coming out of it it feels perhaps a bit flimsy however that's to be expected i think the amount of money you're paying you're not paying top dollar for a super expensive really premium mouse and so the you know they can maybe cutting some corners in some areas but i still feel like this is a very good mouse for the money it's been really nice to use and i think it is one of the better cheaper mice that i've seen of late as well you'll see there are two igb lighting zones you basically have the mouse wheel and the logo on the back so there's nothing over the top in terms of lighting but considering that mice like the razor viper ak don't even have any rgb lighting on it this mouse packs in a multitude of specifications and features within it which is really cool you can see those quick strike buttons in action here now there's not a lot of sideways play or anything in them but as I said, I did find that occasionally they made a noise when I wasn't using them. However, you can see just how low they sit and how close they must be to the switches. And that's one of the main selling points of the Quick Strike setup is that it's designed basically to react really quickly. It uses Omron switches with up to 50 million key press guarantee and it's been accurate and I've not had any issues with that. There's no sideways scroll on the mouse wheel but it does have a satisfying tactile response to it and a nice grip and the RGB lighting is actually really bright as well. You can see a part of it in this video as I have my hand and the palm near the logo and you can see it just glowing from the mouse wheel too so it ticks the boxes in a lot of different ways this mouse and I was really surprised by it because when I got it out of the box initially I was a bit underwhelmed with it I'd come from a number of other mice that I've been testing recently that were more premium more expensive and so I was expecting to be underwhelmed by this but actually when I started using it I found it was a nice big size and it's packed full of features and loads of specification things the fact that it works with the latency analog is really impressive the fact that it also has that really high polling rate so the low latency settings that you can adjust within iq software as well makes it also appealing and the weight of it the shape of it and the multitude of buttons or the sheer number of buttons make it a very appealing mouse it is obviously a right-handed mouse for lefties it would probably be awful because of the way it's shaped and the design of it because it slopes off to the right a bit more a bit hard to put into words what that feels like but it's certainly an unusual design in that way but overall for a right-handed gamer that's into playing all sorts of games but likes to be playing fast-paced fps games and if you think of yourself you want to be pro gaming you want to get some good action in and reduce latency and get some good shooting and get the edge on the competition then this might well be worth considering here we are in corsair's iq software and you can see the Sabre Pro set here alongside the K55 RGB Pro that I'll be doing a video on in the near future. And you'll see this is within IQ's version 4. And you can see that you have a number of quick access settings that you can get to here on the home page of this now. And quickly, one of the first things that you should change and that you're able to change to get the maximum performance out of this is the polling rate. So you can see that I click on device settings. As standard, I believe it was set to 1000 hertz. You can see that's one millisecond. You can sit here to 8000 hertz polling rate, 0 0.125 milliseconds. So you get a lot faster response in that click latency so you're basically minimizing system latency if you use this in combination with nvidia's reflex latency analyzer you can improve the performance of your system minimize system latency and hopefully get a competitive edge but even if you're using it without the latency analyzer using the 8000 hertz polling rate will be advantageous whether you'll notice the difference or not is down to a personal thing i personally haven't noticed a massive difference in the change between them but if you're playing at pro level you might well do that now it is worth noting that when you click to apply this you do get a warning message to tell you that you requires a powerful system in order to do it because it puts extra pressure on your pc in order to handle those because of the number of clicks and scans that it's doing regularly through the system there's more on this in the description and through on Corsair's product videos on this but it's worth knowing that you need to apply that in order to go into it as general you'll be able to see that you can then access the various buttons and you can see that you can hover over them so left click you can't change to anything else but you can change the other buttons and program them to be other things you can obviously backwards and forwards on the side buttons for example if we click on those 
you can then assign another button here so we could change it to another mouse button or a keyboard button you can set it up to um, interface with media so you could use it for media playback and it's playing spotify or whatever else you can disable buttons that you don't want to use use it to launch apps or program a macro macros recording within iq software is really easy because you basically just press record and then type whatever you want in here and you will see that as it's doing it, it actually catches a delay between those. So you can go in, you can put turn delays off as well. So when you're doing that, also you can go through and you can delete the various events or you can copy events. So it's really easy to edit macros within this system too, which is really nice. And then you can just pop that in on that button. So now we've got a macro set up on this button. You can see it's highlighted but it's easy to delete and go back to the standard default settings if you so wish. The lighting effects, you can see I've currently got it set to scenes, but you can change through a number of effects in here and you'll see there's watercolor, rainbow, color pulse and color shift. You can also get a static color, solid color, gradient or a lighting link, which connects with various other Corsair peripherals to basically have the effects over each of them. As I said, there's two lighting zones. You have it on the mouse wheel and on the logo. So there's not a multitude of RGB lighting zones here. But if you have Corsair peripherals, you can combine them to create some pretty nice effects. So I've actually found it to be really bright on this mouse. It's surprisingly bright, which gives a nice glow to your hand and other things. You can also set up a hardware lighting effect. So this is when IQ is not running. It will be set to this as default. I honestly like my mouse to be set to just one color rather than constantly glowing, but I think this is a nice looking mouse in terms of that. Now, DPI levels are said you can have a multitude of DPI settings on here and you can see it's set through various different stages and you can basically switch between those five stages as they're set. And this is the default setting. So you've got 400, 800, 1200, 1600, and 3200. But you can go all the way up to 18,000 DPI is the maximum level, which is very high. And you probably won't ever use that, but you can easily switch between them. And then it gets in, <laughs> it gets pretty bonkers. The other thing that you'll see, one of my favorite things about Corsair peripherals is this sniper button. So you can set a really low DPI level and then assign that to a particular button so that when you press and hold it you drop down into that low DPI so you have really small movements and you can get an accurate thing. Surface calibration is basically setting it up to work with your particular mouse surface whether that's a mouse mat or other surface and you can customize it in that way too and so you can see the software is pretty straightforward but you have a number of options for customizing the buttons here and getting it set up the way you want it. So there we have it. A mouse that proves that you shouldn't judge a book by its cover because my first thought was that it looked pretty naff and wasn't going to be very good. And that is especially the case because it's a more budget mouse and yet the end result is actually a very capable mouse with a number of really nifty features and sort of premium level specifications as well. Customizable nicely within IQ software as always, but more importantly as that high polling rate, low latency settings and the ability to just get the job done. So a decent mouse that isn't gonna cost you the earth and yet will make you a pro gamer, maybe potentially possibly. This has been the Provoke Pro and hope you found this video useful. Be sure to check out the links for other information in the description and check out my other videos on Reflex Latency Analyzer and the Viper 8K and more. Thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Pro and thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Hope you found it useful, interesting, hilarious or all of the above. Be sure to check out the description for other information you might find interesting and subscribe and watch these other videos as well that I think might be useful to you and have a great life.